Hey folks, really excited to show you a new block called the continue block. I'm going to add one right here. It's located in the divider category and there's two main use cases for using the continue block. One is to progressively reveal content a little bit at a time and the other is to ensure learners have completed interactive blocks. Let me show you the first use case. So here's my continue block. I just added it. You'll notice before I have text in an image and then I have the rest of the content. When I preview that, this is what it looks like. There's the text, there's the image. Below the continue button, there is no content. The learner must click it to see the rest. Great. So that's one great use case to progressively reveal content. Another is to ensure learners have clicked on or completed interactive content. Take this tabs interaction for instance. I'm going to go into again the continue block and add it there but this time I'm going to edit it and I'm going to change when the button will show to uh, always show the button that there's no conditions. But I'm going to change it to this condition that the learner must complete the block directly above. And you'll notice you get a little notification here. Of course, you can edit that text. So again, let's preview the lesson. We get that first continue block that we saw before, uh, or the continue button. And then we scroll down. There's that tabs interaction. And notice here, we get this little notification. Complete the content above before moving on. And so I'm going to go into and complete this button. And actually, I'm going to scroll up a little bit so you can see. Now watch when I click the third tab here. Notice that the button changed. Voila. And then I can go on like that. Cool. Let's go back and look at one more way the button can be used. So let's say down here, the end of the lesson, I want to add a, uh, a knowledge check. Okay, just a quick question like that right there and then before they complete the lesson um, we want to ensure that they do indeed take this knowledge check so I'm going to add another continue block and this one I'm going to actually change the settings I want to make sure that they do all the interactive things on the page right I want to make sure they do the checks that they do the three tabs and they do the knowledge check and so I'm going to have this one button that governs all those things I'm going to remove this now just one tip when we go and edit this to completion type complete all blocks above um, it's going to ensure that every interactive component on the page is completed generally it's a good idea to do that if you have two maybe three interactive blocks. But if you have too many blocks that you're um, doing that type of condition on, learner could get confused. So you may want to do it every two or three blocks rather than one for, you know, 10 interactive blocks on the page. Okay, great. So, uh, and I can edit that text if I want. Complete the check boxes, the tabs, and the knowledge check. Right. I can contextualize that. Let's go ahead and preview this whole thing. All right, so there's my text, my image, the first com block, continue block, and notice um, I have those checks, I have the tabs, and then all the way down here, it wants me to do this. So let's go ahead and do that. I gotta do these checks, do these tabs, come down here, and as soon as I submit that, boom, I get the continue block, I hit it, I get this nice little thing here. One other way I want to uh, encourage you to be creative with your continue blocks, um, you can customize, I'm going to jump down to this four-step process, you can customize the text on these buttons, right? So here, previously it said continue, I changed it to proceed to step one. And look, I made sort of like a little mini process, if you will. 
I know you guys are gonna get very creative on how you use continue blocks. Excited to see what you do with it. Enjoy.